What's up, everybody? Welcome to Coding with Chaim. In this week's video, we're going to talk about the this keyword in JavaScript. And along with that, we're also going to talk about the bind method as well as arrow functions. So let's get into it. So on screen right now, I have a very simple example, a very simple uh, snippet of code. What I have is a, a variable declared using the var keyword whose value is John. Then I've got a person object that basically has two keys on it. The first one is a name whose value is Chaim. Then I've got a walk method, which is, uh, or the walk property, which is a function. And all it really does is simply logs this.name is walking. And finally on line 10, I say person.walk. Let's run this code and see what we get. As you can see right now, I get Chaim is walking. Now let me make a simple change, right? I'm basically gonna say const walk. I'm gonna create a local variable that's gonna be equal to person.walk. Right? In other words, I'm not going to call person that walk, rather I'm going to assign it to a local variable called walk, then run this local variable, same snippet of code, except the way that I'm calling the function has changed. And now I get a different output. As you can see, now I'm getting John is walking, right? And so that's kind of the crux of this video. That's what we're going to kind of try to figure out. Why did John change? Why did this change? Why did we go from Chaim to John and vice versa, right? That's kind of the whole goal of this video. So let's look into this. So as you can see, Inside of the walk method, I'm basically console.logging this.name is walking, right? When I called it on line 10 as person.walk, we got the value Chaim is walking. Then when I simply made a small change and assigned the person.walk to a local variable and called it just out in the file on line 12, I got John is walking. So why is that? So the answer is that that's actually what this keyword is all about. Basically, whenever JavaScript comes across to this keyword in your code, JavaScript will try to kind of fill in the blank because you can think of the this keyword as sort of like this blank canvas that can sort of adapt based on the actual running code. And so JavaScript can kind of fill in the meaning of what it is. And the way that JavaScript does that is by looking at the call side of the function and depending on how the function is getting called, that this keyword will take on a different meaning. Let me, let me just kind of demonstrate what I mean by that. In the first example, when I simply called person.walk, in this case, given the fact that the person object is actually the one calling walk, which you can see because it's, be, it's actually being written as person.walk, we're literally calling it off of the person object. Now when JavaScript will come across to this keyword, JavaScript will infer that the, this keyword is referring to person since person is the one calling the function. So again, JavaScript needs to infer what this is because it's kind of a very vague and ambiguous term. It's just this, like what is this? And so JavaScript will infer that based on the call side of the function. And so since person was the one actually calling the walk method, therefore now this refers back to person. But here when I make this sort, sort of seemingly small change, because again, the actual function is the same, but the way that I call it is different. But now you understand that that's actually not a seemingly small change. It's actually kind of a big change because now the inference of what this re it will refer to is completely different. Because now we're no longer saying person that walk, we're just simply calling walk in of itself outside in the file. Therefore, this will no longer refer back to the person object. So now the question is, what does what does this refer to? Well, in this example, it's actually going to be the actual file itself, which is basically the global context. And since within the global scope, within the global context, I actually have a variable uh, declared using the var keyword whose name or whose value is John, it'll basically output John is walking. Okay, so that explains the sort of idea that JavaScript can infer that this keyword based on the call side of the function. But all of that is on the assumption that we haven't explicitly told JavaScript what this refers to. In other words, if we're leaving JavaScript on its own and we're basically telling it like, listen, you're going to have to infer yourself what this refer to, refers to. You need to figure this out yourself. Then this is the way that JavaScript does it by looking at the call site. But there's actually a way for us to, as developers to actually explicitly tell JavaScript, don't worry about looking at the call site. I will tell you what this refers to. So let me show you how this is done. Actually, I'm going to leave that as is. So we're going to say person that walk now bind equal to person. So bind basically says like this. It says that this walk method that this walk function that we are now creating off of the person that walk method is going to be bound to this person object. So therefore, we're basically telling JavaScript, I don't care where this function is getting called or how it's getting called or when it's getting called. I don't want you to bother trying to figure out what this is referring to. I am telling you that regardless of the circumstance, this will be referring to the person object. And so now when I run this code, you can actually see that it's still gonna say Chaim is walking despite the fact that I'm not calling it off a person that walk. I'm calling it out in the regular file in of itself. I'm just simply saying walk, where previously that gave me the value that John is walking. But now since I'm no longer letting JavaScript figure this out on its own, I am explicitly telling JavaScript what this is referring to by using the bind method. Now it'll actually say Chaim is walking. Okay. So that basically deals with actually using the actual function keyword. What happens now if we actually use the arrow function instead? Let's see how that changes things. Let's change this and no longer use the function keyword. Let's apply the arrow function. 
and then let's remove bind and let's go ahead and call this. So if we run this code right now, it says John is walking. Okay, we kind of expected that because that's how it was working previously. So let's come with these two, two, these two lines of code out. Let's come back to the first way where it says person that walk, where previously this would give us Chaim is walking. Now if I run this code, it still says John is walking. Hmm, that's interesting because previously, if I was calling it off a of person that walk when I was using the function keyword, it now was referring to, so person was referring to, or this was referring to the person object. Therefore, when it said this dynamic would say Chaim is walking. Now though, it still says John is walking despite the fact that I'm saying person that walk. Now the reason why that is, is because we are in fact using the arrow function. So let me explain. With the function keyword, this is kind of malleable. It kind of becomes whatever is calling the function. But the arrow function basically says, no, I'm not going to let this change. Whatever this was referred to at the time when the function was defined, that is going to be the this throughout the entire life cycle of the function, no matter where it's getting called. So therefore, when this function was first defined, before it's ever been, been called, before we even ever got to line 10, at this point right here, when we're defining the function, this is referring to the global context, right? So therefore, even when I finally get to line 10 and I'm saying person that walk, it'll still say John is walking because John lives in the global context. And the reason for that is because the arrow function basically says, regardless of where the function is getting called, I'm not going to let the this keyword change based on the call side of the function. The only thing that determines what this means is going to actually be the definition time of the function. So in other words, when the function was defined, whatever this meant, then this will be, this will still be equal to that same thing, regardless of how it's getting called. And to kind of take this a step further even, if let's say I come back to this example where I was using binds, in other words, I'm going to actually try to explicitly set the walk method to be equal to person object. Let me do that. If I'll just say person.bind or walk.bind is equal to person, run this code. As you can see, it is still equal to John is walking. So basically the arrow function is very, very strict. It basically says whatever this meant when the function was defined, that's always going to be true no matter how you call this function. We look at the time of definition and not at the time of calling, and you cannot explicitly tell me otherwise. The hour function basically says only the time of definition matters. So that does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please drop a like, subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you next week in another video.